Hello everyone, Ryan here. So I thought I'd talk about 10 of my favorite audiobooks. Of course, audiobooks that I've not only listened to, but reviewed here on my channel. And so yeah, of course I will also provide links to my complete reviews of all of these audiobooks that I mentioned. Just in case you want to check those out. Um, uh, I wanted to mention beforehand, uh, I apologize if you hear any like background noises. Uh, you might hear like dogs barking in the background, people talking, chatting it up. <laughs> That's because, you know, it's Memorial Day weekend and there's a lot of people over here in my house right now. And I, I, I really couldn't, you know, I can't do anything to filter out their, the noise they make. So, so anyways, I'll start with number 10, uh, Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. I listened to this sometime at the beginning of this year. It's a memoir read by Tina Fey. I liked it for the most part only because Tina Fey has an interesting sense of humor. Uh, and I liked hearing about her childhood. Uh, ultimately, to me, she came across as, as like, a pretty cool person, like an interesting person that, you know, I think I would have liked hanging out with when I was a kid. Uh, number nine, Unqualified by Anna Ferris. This is also a memoir, and it's read by Anna Ferris, or narrated by Anna Ferris. Uh, also interesting, except I like, in this one, Anna Ferris, uh, definitely seemed to tell the truth for the most part. Like, she wasn't afraid of, you know, just, you know, really telling people about what it was like for her uh, trying to break into, I guess, the movie business. And then also, at one point, she gave up on acting and then kind of fell back into it accidentally. And So, yeah, pretty interesting. Uh, Eight, A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. Uh, of course, rest in peace, Stephen Hawking. I listened to this the audiobook version of this sometime. I want to say like maybe a couple of months before Stephen Hawking's passing. And I will admit, most of it, most of the content went right over my head. <laughs> but I, I enjoy it nonetheless because I always enjoy hear, uh, reading about or hearing about anything that has to do with the universe, galaxies solar systems, planets, stars, and all of that. Uh, Seven, Travels with Charlie by John Steinbeck. This is, I want to say, if not the only nonfiction thing that John Steinbeck has written, but I guess one of the first that he wrote. This one is just, he traveled across the country sometime in the late 50s or early 60s, and traveled across country just you know, had some conversations with people, uh, wrote about him. And of course, you know, because he rented this camper and a truck and then took his dog with him, his dog who was a French poodle named Charlie. So uh, it was pretty interesting. I mean, I liked it for the most part. Uh, the audiobook that I listened to, it was, I want to say it was narrated by the actor Gary Sinise. So, yeah. Uh, very interesting. I especially like the, the latter portion of it because uh, he drove through the south, the southern part of the country and, yeah, obviously encountered encountered extreme prejudice. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I don't want to say any more than that because you can check out my complete review of it. Uh, number six, The Danish Girl by David Ebershoff or Ebershoff. Uh, obviously, I know a lot of people are familiar with the movie adaptation. Uh, and of course, the movie adaptation, I, I saw the movie first before listening to the audiobook. Uh, I will say, you know, I like both. I mean, I like the movie, but definitely when it comes to the book or audiobook, obviously, there's way more detail. <laughs> uh, and you know, I like that as far as the audiobook is concerned, it provides a lot more background information as far as, you know, when it comes to the main character. Uh, 
<clears throat> unfortunately, his name escapes me right now. Because <laughs> it's been a while since I listened to the audiobook. But I do remember I liked it. I liked the way it was written. Kind of haunting, but also intriguing. Uh, and a little bit uh, informative, too, when it comes to, you know, things like uh, transgender people, uh, you know, what, you know, offers, to me it offered like an interesting glimpse into, into that whole, uh, I don't want to say world, but just an in- interesting glimpse into the mind of a transgender person. So, obviously not a complete, thorough glimpse, but, you know, and if you want to know more, you can check out my review of that, so. Uh, number five, Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. And originally, I attempted to read the physical book, you know, the physical copy of Sharp Objects. Um, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to really get into it. And even when I listened to the audiobook, I can get into like the first 20 or so minutes maybe even more than that 20 to 30 minutes <laughs> uh Sandra is just about this journalist who she returns to her hometown called wing gap in order to write about these like girls who were being kidnapped uh and murdered and nobody and the town really knew what was going on, uh, and nobody really even seemed to care much about it. <laughs> so she goes, and then, you know, she reconnects with some of her old friends, tries to reconnect with her estranged mother. Uh, yeah, she turns out she's got this, like, really, I want to say, like, strained relationship with her mother. But uh, overall, it was definitely interesting. For me, I didn't really start to pick up until, like, definitely the latter half towards the second half of of the audiobook. And, uh, but at least the, the ending, you know, uh, I found the ending pretty interesting. Had, so... I don't want to say any more. Obviously, you can check out my review of that too. So, number four, The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien or Tolkien or Tolkien. I never, um, I never read The Hobbit before in its entirety. So, and I came across this audiobook version in which it's uh, from the BBC Radio collection. I guess at one point they did this whole thing where they performed The Hobbit um, over the radio, obviously. It's, but uh, but um, <clears throat> they had like, I don't know how many actors I want to say, I don't know. To me it sounded like maybe five or six actors or, who did the voices of different characters. And it was really interesting. And then also too, uh, there's the music... It has this interesting music score to it, so yeah, you can check out my complete review of it as well. Uh, number three, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. This one, of course, I know so many people are familiar with the classic movie that stars Gene Wilder, uh, and of course, obviously, if you never if you never heard of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, you definitely got to look that up. Uh, but this one, <clears throat> I had never read the, the actual book. So and I came across this audio book version. And I liked it. it. It made me, you know, it made me appreciate the story in a slightly different way. <laughs> Uh, and also, too, it, it, for me, it invoked a lot of really good uh, childhood memories of just watching watching that, watching the movie, the original movie. Uh, and in this audiobook, it has they have interesting 
sound effects. So, <laughs> which made it, which for me made it, you know, more enjoyable. So, um, so yeah, you can check out my complete review of that too. Number two, uh, The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. This is another memoir. Um, this one, uh, really kind of got to me. <laughs> mm. In that, because the author Jeanette Walls, she writes about, or wrote about, uh, <clears throat> her childhood, what was it like, what, what it was like growing up poor, but not only that, but growing up and by being raised or <clears throat> somewhat raised by these parents, like both her mother and her father, because her parents seem to be stubborn. But not only stubborn, but I, I mean, just so deliberately stubborn that they, they actually prefer to have their children starve uh, rather than accept help from any, from any people, from, from any outside source or, you know, you know, it's, in other words, you know, the, instead of, instead of making sure that their children, because Jeanette Wallace, it was her, and then she had, she also has two sisters and a brother. So pretty much while they were growing up, uh, it was a very, it was it was a rare occurrence when they had food to eat, uh, which, which for me it definitely sucked. And uh, you know, the whole time I, I remember, the whole time I was listening to this audio book, you know, I found it like it was hard for me to wrap my mind around the, around, you know, it just it 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 definitely opened my eyes, opened my mind to the fact that, uh, yeah. There, I guess there really are crappy parents out there. <laughs> but not just crappy parents, not just parents who, like, don't, you know, don't have an active hand in raising their kids, but just that there, I guess there actually are parents out there who really don't give a damn if their kids starve to death or, <laughs> or come close to starving to death. And, uh, yeah, it's just... Uh, Definitely intriguing. I do. I, I believe everyone should listen to this audio book at least once, or read the physical book, you know, or both. Uh, and there is a movie adaptation out, but honestly, I saw the movie adaptation, and it doesn't do the book justice. It just in the movie they they cut out some pretty pivotal moments I feel uh, but hey that's Hollywood for you that's, uh, so yeah I mean if you want to check out my complete review of that that link will be provided and so for number one uh, definitely this was a no brainer for me uh, I know a lot of people are familiar with this book uh, the Hate You Give by Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, I listened to this uh, honestly sometime last year, not this year, but last year. Uh, I attempted to read the physical book first, and I only got so far because then I had to return it to my local library. <laughs> there was this long wait list, uh, and I was lucky enough to find a copy of the audiobook and you know it's just you know I <laughs> I don't know what to say about it cuz you know I reviewed it I reviewed it as thoroughly as I could so definitely I encourage you to check out my review of this if you don't check out any of these other reviews the reviews of these audiobooks I've mentioned I'll say definitely at least, you know, if you're interested in this book at all, you gotta check out my review of it. But not only that, you gotta read it. <laughs> read it or listen to the audiobook. 
the, uh, you know, for me, it started out as like, I thought it was going to be a typical YA kind of thing. And <clears throat> which it definitely has that element to it, but it's actually so much more than that. Cause you know, it covers so many important, important issues like prejudice, racism, uh, you know, the uh, inefficiencies of uh, government, uh, you know, bureaucracy, how, you know, a lot of things get tied down by uh, bureaucracy and the whole, uh, and not only that, but then the fact that too many people, you know, get caught up in stereotypes and point the finger and all that, you know, I mean, because essentially, you know, the the main character is this girl, this girl named Star. <clears throat> she sees a friend of hers get shot by a police officer. She witnesses the whole thing, uh, and then, you know, of course, ultimately the police officer isn't charged with anything, uh, even though he had. Essentially, for me, I felt like he had no real cause to shoot an unarmed kid. Uh, you know, it's, it's just, you know, I don't want to get in too in-depth in it because I feel like I covered it in my review. But it is definitely a great, great read, great listen. Uh Yeah. You should definitely, you definitely got to read it if you haven't already, you know, there's a reason why, you know, there's a lot of hype surrounding this book. Uh, and, you know, it's not like with every other book, people will hype up a bunch of other stuff and, and then you go to read it and, you know, it turns out to be really like, not that great. <laughs> but this one, no, it, it, it is, you know, take my word for it. Or not, or, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's it. You just gotta read it or listen to the audiobook. You know. Plus, I believe there's a movie version coming out. I'm not not sure exactly when. I don't know later this year or sometime next year. Uh, I, which I really do hope. I really do hope that the movie does it justice. I mean, it's. Yeah, it'd be a shame if they if they cut out even like half of what's in the novel and yeah, it's but I wouldn't be surprised if they did. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. So there you have it, there's a ten of my favorite audiobooks that I've read that I listened to and reviewed. Once again I'll provide links to all of these um I mean, links where you can check out my complete reviews of each one. And, yeah, that pretty much does it. Thanks for watching this. Thanks for listening. As always, till next time, don't forget, keep it real, keep on rocking, and peace.